Our New Testament reading this morning comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 26 through 31. So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whisper, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the Father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. And let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God be with us this day. May my words be your words, and may we have the courage to put your words into practice, now and always. Amen. There was a man who was out walking in the mountains. He was enjoying the scenery, he wasn't really paying attention, he stepped too close to the edge of the mountain and he started to fall. In fear and desperation, he reached out to grab a limb of an old tree and he became suspended over the cliff, totally helpless. The only thing preventing him from falling to his death was that old precarious limb that held him suspended in this mid-air. He tried to figure out a way to get himself safely back on the ground. He assessed his situation and he figured that it was about 900 feet from the floor of the canyon below. If he should lose his grip or if that branch should give way, he would surely die. Finally, in sheer desperation, he called out, Hello, is there anyone there? And he heard a voice and it said, Yes, I am here. And he said, well, I got stuck. You see, I was out walking, I was enjoying the scenery, I got too close to the edge of the cliff, and I fell, and now I'm hanging over the cliff from a tree branch. And the voice said, I know. Well, I could use some help. I know. Well, time is kind of of the essence here. I know. And then the man said, who is this? And the voice said, I am the Lord your God. I know you are stuck, and I know that you are in a dangerous situation. And the man said, well, could you hurry up? Because my hands are really getting sore. I know. And they will get sore and sore until the pain will win out, and you will let go, and you will plummet 900 feet into the canyon below. But have no fear, for I am here. All you have to do is let go now, and I will catch you. To which the man said, is there anyone else up there? (laughs) That was a joke. Don't take that as my theology, please. (laughs) Fear is one of those crazy emotions. It is vital to our survival because if we didn't have it, we couldn't protect ourselves from the dangers and the threats of life. Fear helps us to survive. Fear motivates us to action. Fear of something can help us to show respect. The problem arises when we give in to our fears or our fears begin to dictate and control our lives. Today in these six verses, Jesus tells his disciples three times to not be afraid or to fear not. Today in these six verses, Jesus helps his disciples because of the fears that they were facing. And I want to discuss each one that Jesus talks about. First in verse 26, he says, For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. And then he says, And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Jesus is is telling his disciples that there is no need to be afraid of the truth. Once we learn the truth, once we learn that the gospel is truth, we should proudly and boldly preach the gospel message, preach the life of Christ and the truth that God gives us. 
As Christians, we need not be afraid to tell people of God, to show people who God is, and to live that truth with our very lives. And there is another thing about truth that we need to remember. It always comes to light. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered. Things that are untrue have no substance, and sooner or later, they will unravel. Sometimes, because of that, we are afraid of the truth. We are afraid that someone will find out what we have said or what we have done. We are afraid because the truth can change our lives. We are afraid because the truth can make us angry or worried or sad. But Jesus says to embrace the truth and not to fear it, because truth prevails, truth reveals, truth will set you free. And the second time Jesus tells us not to be afraid is in verse 28. He says, Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Unfortunately, humans can ruin us, they can destroy us, they can even kill us, but they cannot touch our soul, our true essence, that part of us that is directly and purely connected to God. People cannot take us away from God's love, people cannot prevent us from eternal life, people cannot stop us from receiving God's grace. No matter what comes our way, we need not fear because we have God, which means we have God's grace, God's forgiveness, God's mercy, and God's love. Jesus also states that we should fear him who can destroy both body and soul. Now, I take that to mean that the devil is alive and well and at work in the world. So, as Christians, we need to stay vigilant because the temptation of Satan is always a looming threat. We can be influenced, we can be tempted, we can be led astray. Putting Christ first is not an easy thing to do. Being selfish, being undisciplined in our faith, not working hard to make a difference in the world, choosing not to help God's people, that is easier than putting God first because putting because it takes very little effort and work. Giving God central place in our lives, daily prayer, seeking God's will, living out our faith, putting our needs last, loving, forgiving, helping, accepting, studying scripture, following the Ten Commandments, living by the fruits of the Spirit, and loving the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our minds, with all our strength, and with all our soul. That is hard to do. But the good news is that God is right here with us. And as long as we try, as long as we are faithful, as long as we are loyal, we have nothing to fear. We simply need to try every day to put God first. The third thing that Jesus talks about when he talks about fear is in verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted, so do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Jesus tells us not to fear because we have a God that cares for us. A God so involved in our lives that the very hairs on our head are counted. Do you know how many hairs actually are on your head? I looked it up. I <laughs> Not that it's true, but I went to answers.yahoo and I put in the question, how many hairs do you have on your head? On the average, there are over 100,000 strands of hair on a young adult head. Blondes average about 140,000 strands. Brunettes average about 108,000 strands. And redheads average about 90,000 strands of hair. Hair grows at a rate of 150 millimeters a year. And each individual hair lasts for two to six years before it falls out. The follicles has a rest for a while and another takes its place. Hair grows quickest in young adult women aged between 16 and 24. I can't wait to see Lindsay's hair when she's between 16 and 24. Oh, sorry, that's her legs. I can't wait to see it when she reaches 16. 
If God cares for us so much, and that care is so vast that he even knows about the hairs on our head, why do we worry? Why do we worry about trivial things in our lives? I think we worry because it's human nature to do so. I think we worry because of self-esteem issues. We worry because of guilt. We worry because we don't want to disappoint God and others. We worry when we watch the news. There's people we even worry when there's nothing to worry about. Marcy's father used to say, don't worry, I've seen a lot of problems in my time. <coughs> that was not right. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> he says, okay, I'm not going to worry about this cough. <coughs> it's going to go away. He said, don't worry, I've seen a lot of problems in my time, and most of them never happened. And he's absolutely right. Why worry about things that might not come to pass? Why do we worry about things we cannot change? Why do we worry about anything? If whatever we worry about comes to pass, or if it doesn't, God is still in our midst, God is still with us, and God is still a God who cares very much for us. God provides everything we need to thrive because that's how much God cares. Our food, our shelter, our clothing, our needs, our health, our wisdom, our pleasures and skills, our ability to overcome challenges, our ability to relax and find a, a way to recharge everything on this planet God has given to us to help us to learn to grow and to thrive as long as God is in the center of our hearts what are we worrying about so don't worry about the truth be certain of God's love and continue to serve don't worry about the world or what people will do to us continue to put God first in all you do and don't worry about matters of life. Continue to have faith and God will care for all of your needs. Now once upon a time, there was a family, as most people live in a family, at least around here in this community, and they go to bed one night, as we tend to do. And the father wakes up in the middle of the night with that uneasy, something's terribly wrong, feeling that's what wakes him up and we've we've all had that feeling in our lives we we've, we've all done this when i was after i'd finished seminary i stayed at the church i was working at i stayed there for a year and i got to live in their manse and one night at three in the morning i woke up with that something's wrong feeling and i opened my bedroom door and i discovered that all the lights were on in the house downstairs and i go downstairs and i get confronted with a person in my house. Now, I hate to do this to you, but that's not my story today. So you're just all gonna have to wait and come back, and I will tell that story another time, as soon as I figure out what to do with it. But I will put that story in the sermon. But that feeling, that uneasiness that wakes us up, it woke the father up. And he goes to the bedroom door, and he opens it, and he sees the smoke. He smells the flames, he knows that there's a fire in his house. And he goes into that fight or flight mode and he runs into his two-year-old daughter's room and he scoops her up. And he runs into his five-year-old son's room and he wakes up and grabs him by the hand and they bolt for the door. Now, in that fight or flight mode, in that adrenaline rush, in that I have to save my family feeling, in everything that's going around with the smoke and the flames, he doesn't notice that his son Bobby forgot his stuffed animal, and he goes back into his room to get his precious teddy bear. The dad keeps going, goes outside, gets in the front yard where they're safe, and notices his son isn't with him. His son went back into his room, and now the boy is trapped. The fire and the smoke is too much. And he, he yells out the window for his father, and his father says, Bobby, I am right here. Are you okay? He says, I'm okay. He says, I want you to sit on the edge of the window and put your feet on the outside. And let me know when you've done that. And the boy says, okay, okay, I've done it, I'm ready. He says, now Bobby, I need you to jump. And the boy says, I, I can't jump. I'm, I'm, too, I'm too afraid. I, 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 don't, I, I can't do it. And his father says, I'm right here. You can do this. I need you to jump. And the boy says, I can't jump. I can't see anything. 
It's, it's too much smoke. And his father says, that's okay. I can see you. I need you to jump. And the boy jumped into his father's arms. Our fear, our worry, our anxiety is like that blinding smoke. Jesus tells us, do not be afraid. And he is right here waiting for us to jump. And we can. We need to jump. We need to jump away from our fears. We need to jump through that black, thick smoke that's holding us back. We need to jump from everything that is keeping us trapped. And we need to jump into the loving arms of our Savior. Let us pray. Gracious God, be with us this day. Help us to know that you are here, calming our fears and giving us everything we need to live wonderful, blessed lives. In your name we